What's up guys and welcome back to the countdown to ultimate series of videos, the series where we 100% complete Smash 4 single player and the challenge board. And now for episode, this should be, no no this is part 6, this is part 8 actually, oops, ignore what I said last part, this is part 8. Oh boy, I'm just all over the place today. But I guess that's what happens when you try to get it done. Also, I tried doing this on 8.0 with Pac-Man, and as you'll see later, I didn't exactly make it. I think I died to... There's a round with a big character, I think, where I died with him, but... No, it's no big deal. I didn't want to go and attempt it again, I just wanted to get this done. <laughs> because I was coming right off the heels of finishing last episode with... with, uh, Olimar, Weefit Trainer, and... No, Game Watch didn't give me that much trouble. It, it, I think it was Mega Man, more so, that gave me a bit of a temp. Or maybe it was Rob, I don't even remember. I just know Olimar was the worst, but that's over. It's finally done and over with. It literally took me, like, I mean, I'm pretty sure, I mean, I didn't record all of it. And I'm also just showing this entire match because of all the tricks that I know how to do with Pac-Man. But, uh, that's over. The worst is over with. Smooth sailing from here, with like one exception that I'll probably get into later. That took me a little bit, but not that long. So anyways, Pac-Man. I mean, I knew who this guy was. The only Pac-Man game that I've played is the original. I want to play the Pac-Man World games, but I've only really seen a playthrough of the first one done by Clement. And and I, I don't know, I want to play them at some point because... I mean, the PS1 was something that I kind of grew up with thanks to my cousins, but the PS2 was what I definitely grew up with on my own, because that was the first console I owned, but the thing with that is that I was a dumb kid, and I didn't really play much besides licensed games and the occasional PS2 exclusive. And Sonic. It's pretty much 90% of what I played on the PS2, unless it was with my cousins who actually knew what they were buying. But whatever. So, the thing with Pac-Man here is that he was a character that I expected to get into Smash 4, no doubt, but I didn't think I would fall in love with him the way I did, because pretty much... I mean, I noticed that I have a trend so far, and I'm hoping that it doesn't get broken with the five DLC characters, but basically I've had a trend that... Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure as a kid... I'm pretty sure as a kid at one point when I was playing Melee with my cousins, I was like, I wish Sonic was in this game. But, you know, I won't count that. I won't count that. It's like a prediction thing. But for Smash 4, I basically had a perfect track record with who I predicted. Was that... Uh, there were there were a few characters I predicted. I, I mean, I kind of soft predicted Rosalina and Little Mac because I thought they were shoo-ins. Because Rosalina was literally appearing in everything. And if you want a fighting game character, get Little Mac. He had a revitalization ever since Brawl came out. Because I think a year or two after was when Punch-Out on the Wii came out. But the main three characters that I had predicted for Wii U were Palutena, Pac-Man, and the Miis. Which all came out on the same day, which I was really happy about, because I was like, I don't know, Miis makes sense. Bandai Namco is developing the game, so why wouldn't they put Pac-Man? And people were like, no, they're gonna put Lloyd, or they're gonna put someone else, like Heihachi, or something. And I'm like, guys, it's Pac-Man. Why wouldn't they put Pac-Man in this game? And I didn't know that he was planned for Brawl at one point, or he was that Miyamoto wanted him for Brawl or something. I don't I don't remember what the story was. He was in the talks at the very least, but I didn't hear about that until a little later. And then Palutena was just like, Kiduka's Uprising was great, and it's Sakurai's creation, so I know he's gonna put Palutena. I didn't expect Dark Pit, but you know, it's a nice addition. It doesn't take away a character slot, people. It's literally an extra character. Also, I'm trying to be fancy with the bell here, but then the water pushes it away. But anyway, I predicted those, and then... Uh, DLC, did I really... I don't think I thought up of any of the DLC, because nobody really expected Cloud or Ryu or anything. But the character that I did predict for DLC was Bayonetta, because I voted for her thinking, oh, it's probably not going to happen, but hey, look what happened. Silent majority vote, I guess. And then, for Wii, not for Wii U, for Ultimate, I was kind of like, I was kind of like, with 
with Smash for Switch, there's only two things they can do. It's either a Wii U port with like two or three new characters, or they're gonna do some sort of game where all the characters return. So I was like, one of those is gonna be right. And I was right on everyone is here. So that's kind of what I thought about. And then, of course, Inkling. And then after that, I pretty much had no other predictions because after Inkling, I was like, okay, I'm set. I don't need any more characters. But, you know, in terms of the roster itself, I mean, I'm completely happy with what we have. I was happy after they stopped that everyone is here in Inkling. But for anyone that's left, I guess I would say Sora from Kingdom Hearts. But, like, you know, I would never... I would lose a single blink of sleep if it never happened. Because, you know, I mean, Sora is pretty much just like... You know, I would like to see it. It would be very cool. If we want another square web, I would like him over Gino. Because I have no attachment to Gino, but I know a lot of people want him. But, you know, it's just something that I would really like to see is Sora. And so if that's right, then the streak doesn't, the streak doesn't break. And I'm a psychic at predicting Smash Brothers. Because that's just, that's just my logic. I get four characters right. I predict everyone is here in Inkling, and then the next step is Sora. So let's hope that this works. Also, doing a very specific challenge for Pac-Man over here, because his character-specific challenge is to get 300,000 points in target test stage 3 while hitting the bomb off of the back wall. And after trying to do it a couple times and not exactly getting it, after like 3 or 4 times, I basically went and, oh look, we got 700 unique trophies, but basically after going through a couple times and seeing that I wasn't getting enough points for it, I looked up some videos for it and all the videos that I saw basically had the same thing where they blew up Pac-Man with the first bomb and then did it with the second bomb. So I don't know if that's how you're supposed to do it, I don't know if maybe the Prima Guide says that's how you're supposed to do it and that's why everybody believes that's how you're supposed to do it, but that's what I found and... You know, that's my take on it. That's my take of how I did it. Oh, Pac-Man's All-Star. It's actually pretty simple. I mean, I couldn't really focus on doing any Bell or Hydrant tricks. I didn't really even think to use a Hydra. Well, I used the Hydra once or twice. Yeah, like here. And I meant to aim that downward, but... Whatever. The thing with Pac-Man's All-Star is that, basically, you can literally win becoming a C-Stick War. There are a lot of characters where you can just become a full glory sea stick warrior and win. Pac-Man was one of them, thankfully. I mean, even then I wouldn't mind because he's one of my favorites. But like I like I was saying earlier, I didn't really expect to fall in love with him the way I did. Because there was just something about him that resonated with me. Also, even though I have some mods here, like I think you saw in the beginning of the episode, I have stuff like Street Fighter Pac-Man, and a Knight Pac-Man, and Miss Pac-Man, and Super Pac-Man. And I love Oven Mitts too much. <laughs> Oven Mitts is too good. Because, I, I mean, I don't know who was the genius on the development team that said, Oh, this guy chops down a bunch of food. Let's give him some oven mitts. Like, let's make him serve up your demise. And I love it so much. I mean, I get, I don't know, I'll, I'll say this because I've always wanted to get an extra Pac-Man amiibo to paint it to have oven mitts. And now I have my chance because the Pac-Man amiibo restock has been happening for a while. And one of the amiibo that I'll be getting on the 7th is a Pac-Man. I mean, let me see. The other ones that are coming out... I mean, Samus, Link, and Toon Link have already been getting restocks at GameStop. Pac-Man has been showing up at Best Buy for a while. But I'm going to be getting one on the 7th. As well as a Marth. Because I want to get an extra Marth and Lucina. To paint them to have Sita colors. Because I love them so much. Oh boy. And then, I mean, there are a lot of Amiibo that I want to paint extra colors of because, I don't know, let's go into the story right now, actually. Uh, I have, I'm looking right above me on my desk, I have five extra Amiibo from the Smash line. I have a Robin and a Lucas, which, okay, I have a Robin and a Lucas, which were given to me by my mom's friend. Which, she told me that 
I think this was around Christmas time last year because she told me, hey, my son's got these as gifts. Like, it was something along the lines of my son's got these as gifts, but I don't know who they are and they didn't really seem very interested in them. Would you have a use for them? And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. I mean, Robin, I've always wanted a female Robin. And until Nintendo makes one as part of the Player 2 line, which, speaking of which, why doesn't Nintendo do that like they did with Cloudcorn and Bayo? Do that for the ultimate characters. Give us the, the Koopalings, give us Alf, male Weefa Trainer, female Robin. You know, people would buy it. Everybody would buy it. I don't know why they haven't done that, but... Anyways, I want to make a female Robin since Lucas was also given to me. I wasn't planning on him, but since he was given to me, I guess I can do Klaus. Or maybe Johnny Bravo. <laughs> I don't know, I'll, I'll figure out what I want to do with him. But then, I also have two Samuses, because I wanted to paint them to have the fusion suit and the gravity suit. One of the extra Samuses I got as Toys R Us was shutting down, and so I got it for like, I think it was like five bucks or so. And then the second Samus was one that I got when I was visiting Costa Rica one time, because Costa Rica is kind of a gold mine. For the unicorn amiibo that's where i found marth in like early 2015 and after converting into costa rican dollars and stuff it was well it's not dollars but after converting currencies it was something like 35 to 40 which is still like a third of the price if even for what scalpers were asking for back in the day for marth but i got a sandwich from there that's also where i got gold mario and gold mario was i think like 70 something which was still a lot better but it wasn't exactly a scalper, it was just more so like conversion rates and all that. But it was still, I guess, overpriced for what it was. It may have been like 60 or something. I don't know, I'm probably over exaggerating. I, I forget, that was over three years ago. But anyway, the last two extra amiibo that I have are a Bayonetta 2 Bayonetta and a Advent Children Cloud. Because and, and I may get a Bayonetta 1 version Bayonetta eventually, once those get restocked. Because the story with these two was, when did they come out? When did they come out? Like, late July, early August, something like that? Those amiibo of 2016? And I basically told myself, I want extras of these because I want to paint them like mods that I have. Like, Cloud, the Advent Children one, I wanted to paint to be like the Mewtwo King mod. Which you'll see later on in this video if you don't know what I'm talking about. And then Bayonetta 2, Bayonetta, I wanted to paint blue. Because Bayonetta 1 has a blue costume. But I thought it would look cool. It would have looked cool on Bayo 2. Whew, okay. But, but, you know, that didn't exist, so I made it into a mod. That was one of the first mods that I made, but I was also very proud of it. In what I made, so I just made a blue Bayonetta 2, and I want to paint it to look like that. But the story with those amiibo was that I was just like, okay, I'll wait a month. After they come out, I'll wait a month, and then I'll go look for them. If they're around, I'll pick them up, because, I mean, you know, for the people who wanted them, they already got them, and if they waited this long, then that's kind of their fault for missing out. And then I have some other ones planned, like I have, uh, I want to do something with Sonic, but I don't know what I'd do. Maybe I'd do the Supergirl Kells skin that I made, based off of her OC avatar, whatever. It is technically called. I don't even know if she has a name for it, but... Or maybe I could do the crystal rings. I don't know. But... Martha and Lucina, paint like Sita. Eh, there are some other ones. Oh, yeah, uh... For pre-orders, I, I pre-ordered two Ice Climbers. Well, I mean, I have every single Smash Amiibo, so I pre-ordered all of them. But I pre-ordered two Ice Climbers because I want to paint the second one to have the skin that I love using, which is the red Nana White Popo. So, you know, I had to do that. And there are probably some other ones in there, but it'll depend on if I can find them. Basically. But anyways, Pac-Man's done. Now for the second character of this video, we are going to be using Cloud. And... Oh boy, nobody ever saw him coming, and... Honestly... Let me think back. Uh... Well, Palutena was hype for me because I remember the story with that one specifically. Uh, I was in summer school because I was a horrible high school freshman. <laughs> I was in summer school. E3 was happening around that time. 
and we had finished an assignment, but I had to wait in the class silently until everyone else finished at the time. So I was watching the Nintendo E3 conference, which I only missed like the first 10 minutes of. And so I missed out... Well, actually, no, I didn't even miss out on anything. I think I missed out on some pre-show or something. Because I remember, I remember opening it. I remember opening it, and seeing uh, Reggie and Iwata fighting. Because I pretty much opened up, I pretty much opened it up, and it was, it was Reggie going, "Here's what's new from the robot chicken thing," and I was just like, "Wait, what? What did I miss?" But then it went into them fighting, and I saw the memes. But then at the end of the presentation, when I saw Palatina, it was like, it was the hardest thing in the world to stay silent in that room. Because like I had like I was so giddy like just jumping in my chair, everybody probably looked at me like it was a weirdo, but I didn't care. I got the character that I had wanted most for Wii U in there. And then Yeah, because that was before Bayonetta 2 came out. And even though I had played the first one I mean it wasn't exactly someone who I was thinking of at the time. But especially after I played Bayonetta 2 and was like, wait a minute, this is a Nintendo system, and after they opened the ballot my mind started racing. And I was like, wait, Nintendo was the one who made Bayonetta 2 happen, so hey, why not? Let's vote for her in the ballot. But Bayonetta wasn't exactly someone I was thinking of at that time. I was thinking all about Palutena and Pac-Man. And since those, and kind of the Miis, because Miis were just kind of like, come on, it's going to happen. And Pac-Man was kind of the same, but I kind of wanted him as well, but not as much as Palutena. And so when all three of those happened on the same day, I was just like, oh my god, I'm a god. But... Cloud, I think, was the most magical reveal for everyone because, I mean, it was one of the few that didn't get leaked for whatever reason, besides Corrin and Bayonetta. But, you know, Corrin, not Corrin, Cloud was someone that everybody only joked about. Well, I mean, in the Brawl days, I guess people wanted Cloud in the game. But, you know, people would only joke about, like, oh, Cloud, ha ha ha, it's not gonna happen because the Square and it's a PlayStation character, but then I'm like, well, Snake happened. And people. It, it's amazing how people forget that in the GameCube Game Boy Advance era was when all of these characters were technically on Nintendo systems mostly for the first time. Because. I mean, Cloud's is kind of weird because the only Nintendo system he's ever appeared on was Chain of Memories on the GBA. If you appeared in one of the DS games... Oh no, he was in... He was in... three, Not 3 5, 8 Reco Recoded. He was in Recoded. On the DS. So, But the main thing is that his only appearances on Nintendo systems were in the handheld games and in stuff like Theatrhythm. You know, there was no Final Fantasy VII anything on a Nintendo system. But... You know, seeing him come up was just like... Oh my god, like... How did this ever happen? Who could have expected that, basically? Uh, I mean, Bayonetta was saved. The franchise was saved because of Nintendo, and Bayonetta 3 is coming out. Speaking of which, the Game Awards are tonight. <laughs> which, I mean, they revealed Bayonetta 3 last year. Maybe they'll show a trailer? I hear rumblings that there's supposed to be a Crash Team Racing reveal. That it was teased. So maybe that'll happen. Uh, Metroid Prime 4, maybe they'll show that. I'll be fine with any of those, actually. But I would love to see Bayonetta 3 footage. Uh, or at the very least, like, like a CG cutscene of what the story may be like or something. Because, I mean, the trailer for that they showed last year literally showed Bayonetta being cut up in half. I mean, it, like, if you pay attention to the last few seconds of the trailer, you literally see, like, I mean, you see both of her legs, right? Like, it's just a close-up shot of her legs. The legs fall in opposite directions. And I was just like, what? <laughs> but what else am I thinking? Okay, yeah, Snake had a Game Boy Color game and the Twin Snakes, which was the MGS1 remake. But then when it comes to... Let's see, other characters that were really on Nintendo systems. Uh, oh yeah, people, when they were saying Crash for Smash Ultimate... It was like, oh, the Insane Trilogy's on the Switch now. That means he has a huge chance. But I'm like, guys, he's been on GameCube. <laughs> he's been with Nintendo since Wrath of Cortex. I don't think Twin Sanity was on GameCube, but he had the GBA games. He had Crash Boom Bang on the DS. He had the... 
Crash of the Titans and Mind Over Mutant on the... Were they both on the Wii? Or was Crash of the Titans GameCube? I don't remember. Point is, he's been around on Nintendo for quite a while, guys. And it's amazing how people seem to forget that. Also, I messed up there. I got a little cocky thinking I couldn't use the... I wouldn't use the heart until the second round, and then that little... Metroid enemy, I can't remember its name. It just bopped me up into the, the danger zone. I think that's what it's called. But yeah, that's the Mewtwo King skin, by the way. Basically, one of the five gods of Melee. Really great in any Smash game he plays. Cloud was basically his main after having a little bit of a character crisis in Smash Wii U. And then someone made that mod, and I loved it. That's why I wanted to get an extra cloud so that way I could paint it. And that is a Windows XP limit window, by the way. It says loading limit.exe, and even the status bar moves the way a Windows XP thing would. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's great. Anyways, let's look at the other third-party characters. I mean, Mega Man obviously had a history with Nintendo. He, he appeared on Nintendo Simpsons first. So I don't know why... I mean, there's no argument there. Pac-Man... I mean, arcade character. But he has a huge legacy, and since Namco... I mean, he was considered for Brawl. Which makes sense because he's such a legacy character. But I'm pretty sure he... I mean, I knew he was a shoe-in for Wii U because Bandai Namco is developing the game. And Namco created Pac-Man. What was the company that published it? What, whatever the proper term is, but... Namco owns Pac-Man, basically. So I don't know why people even thought it would be anyone else. Sonic... I mean, of course, the intense rivalry. And, you know, finally being able to fight out Mario and Sonic in Brawl. I mean, despite the state that Sonic was in at the time, because I don't even think Sonic Unleashed was out yet. So the last things we had were... 06, Secret Rings, and Sonic Chronicles, which, oh boy, like... Some of the three worst Sonic games in existence. Because Unleashed and Black Knight came out after, right? Both of those are good. I, I like Black Knight. Unleashed, I've only really played on the Wii and PS2 because I've beaten both, but I, even though... I grew up with PS2. But I bought the 360 version in, like, 2010? 2011? No, I think it was after Generations, actually. So I bought it in, like, 2012. But then I bought the Wii version because why not? And I guess I may as well get the PS3 version at some point because I hear that runs at 60 FPS in some places, and it's worth checking out just to see the differences, but... I beat it on PS2 as a kid. I beat it on Wii. But even though I got the Wii version after the, the 360 version, I still have never beaten the 360 version for some reason. I've gotten up to... I've gotten up to, uh... The night... The second night stage. Yeah, up to Missouri. The night stage. Maybe even the Egg Beetle boss. The first Eggman boss, but... I don't know, I guess something else came up, and... I just didn't go back to it. Maybe I should turn that into a... Blind playthrough series at some point. Maybe I will. But anyway, uh... Whew! What was I thinking of? Um... Other third-party characters. Ryu! Ryu, I already talked about Snake. Ryu... I mean... Street Fighter 2 had... Was Street Fighter 2 ever on Genesis? I don't even... Well, yeah, it did. It was. It was. Because 6-button controller and stuff like that. But the Super Nintendo was the place where it kind of thrived the most. And since then, I don't... Since Street Fighter 2, I don't think many Street Fighters have appeared on Nintendo systems. Because Street Fighter 3, I think that was all PS2. I think. Street Fighter 4 was PS2, PS3, and then the 3DS. Street Fighter 5 is PS5, not PS5, PS4 and, X and PC, not Xbox One. Uh, none of the crossover games really even came into Nintendo either, like Marvel Super Heroes vs. Capcom, or Street Fighter vs. X-Men. Yeah, none of those really came to Nintendo, but... I guess just Capcom legacy character and fighting game character. I guess that's what made the most sense. Cloud I already talked about. Bayonetta I already talked about. Uh, the 
Castlevania, obviously, I think also started on Nintendo systems. If it didn't, it started on the MSX or something. But it definitely had the legacy come from Nintendo. Most definitely. Also, I like these Final Fantasy pictures because, I mean, I guess this one, I guess that's supposed to be Sephiroth? But I know it's Palutena, so I can't help but think of just like Palutena being Cloud's mortal enemy. Being... Oh my god, it's been a while. I, I have no idea. Geostigma, Genova... Which one is it? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> my history with Final Fantasy VII is kind of weird because... Oh, actually... No, I should put this at the end. Why, why did I put this here? Okay, this is the, the gallery video that's supposed to be at the end of the the last part, but this is basically showing that I got all those trophies. Well, I guess I can keep it here, actually. I'll keep it here. Why not? This is basically showing that I got all the trophies from all those characters that either got lost or something due to the capture card stuff. But, you know, I'm just showing that, hey, I got them. I got the all-star trophies, guys. Don't worry. But as I was saying with my thing with Final Fantasy VII, I technically own it now because about five or six years ago, there was a flash sale on PSN where uh, there was a flash sale where basically you could get a ton of PS1 games for a dollar each. I got all the Crash games, all the Spyro games, Gex 2, Buster Move 4, Final Fantasy 7, and some other stuff there. But I haven't touched Final Fantasy 7, but I have technically, well, I haven't beaten it myself yet, actually. I watched my cousins play it, actually, when I was like three or four or something, and you know, I was a little kid, I cried at Aerith dying, all that stuff. But, you know, I had a huge history with Cloud because it was one of the first games I remember watching. And any time that I went over there, I would see them play it because it was it was kind of like a playthrough I did with them. They promised me to not, well, I mean, they had already beaten it, but they promised to say like, hey, let's start this here and every time you come over, we'll continue it. And we'll only continue it when you're here. And so that was a fun experience for me. And that's why Cloud had such a magical impact for me and I was just like uh, it's amazing how many reaction videos I saw where they saw the stars and the music and they were just like whoa what is this and they didn't know until the Final Fantasy logo came up I heard the music and I was just like whoa what what is going on is the remake coming to switch what is this oh boy but anyway the ending to this video has gone on long enough already we're near the final stretch the penultimate episode is next with the last 11 characters before I go into one more episode with Sonic and Bayonetta so I'll see you for part 8. If you like this video, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next part.